Are you looking for an easy and reliable way to extend your home network without running new Ethernet cables? Do you have older devices that need wired connections because they don't have built-in Wi-Fi? Or maybe you just have an unsolvable Wi-Fi connection spot in your house. You've tried every other solution you can find, but your wireless just isn't giving you the speeds you want from your broadband connection in that area. Well, G.HN Wave 2 Powerline Adapters could be exactly what you're looking for. Before jumping into the video, a quick word about our sponsor, Comtrend. Do you need a solution for a very unique networking situation? If so, Comtrend is here to help. Comtrend's lineup of networking products can extend high performance networking connectivity anywhere in the home or office. Check out one of the many networking solutions, including G.HN coax to Ethernet and Powerline adapters, PoE switches, Ethernet power injectors, and extenders. Comtrend's products are designed for people who want to easily expand their connectivity without having to worry about running more cables through their walls. When you choose products from Comtrend, you're selecting a company with 30 years of experience in the industry, and they pride themselves in providing their customers with the most flexible and customizable solutions that fit the most unique needs. Check out us.comtrend.com right away for your next networking purchase. What's going on everybody? Today we're looking at another great product that you may have seen around the internet, but just didn't know how they work or if they'd work for you. G.HN Powerline Adapters use the existing electrical wiring in your home to transmit data and can be a simple and effective way to improve your network speed and reliability. As long as two or more Powerline Adapter devices are in the same power network, they'll find each other, even if they're on different circuit breakers. It does all of this by converting digital data signals from your router into high-frequency electrical signals that are transmitted through the electrical wiring in your home. When the signals reach another Powerline Adapter plugged into an electrical socket, they're converted back into digital data signals that can be received by your devices. The adapters use advanced digital signal processing techniques to reduce interference and improve signal quality. This can help to increase the speed and reliability of your network connection. However, keep in mind that the performance of these adapters can be affected by the quality and age of your electrical wiring, the distance between the adapters, circuit breakers, and the presence of electrical noise from other devices in your home. But this technology means the old laser printer I have stashed in a closet can still get a connection on the network even when wireless isn't an option and the room doesn't have an ethernet plug. Instead, by using a power line adapter, I'm basically putting an ethernet port on the wall, but I'm using my home's existing power network to do it. There are quite a few versions to choose from as well. There are options for adapters with power pass-through, which has a power outlet on the front, so you aren't giving up an outlet just to use the device. There's an option for an adapter with a four port gigabit switch that is absolutely perfect for use in home entertainment setups because one power line adapter can give you four wired connections for gaming consoles, smart TVs, and home theater PCs. No need for an extra gigabit switch taking up space when you have one built right into the adapter. There are also models with wireless built in, meaning that you can place a wireless access point in a far room, basement, sometimes even a detached garage, keeping in mind that performance will vary, sometimes greatly. There's even one with PoE, or power over ethernet, that can give network signal and power to devices that allow it, like security cameras, Wi-Fi access points, or some VoIP phones. That means you won't need to run both ethernet and power when you don't have to. You can mix and match the options and have up to 16 adapters on the same power line network. So you won't be limited to just having two in the home, you can make your own network across your entire house using just these devices. Today, we're going to use two of the power pass-through power line adapters. We all see rates on the outside of boxes, like 2000 megabits per second, but in the real world, it won't get close to that number. The physical rate is the generation of technology, its theoretical maximum. It allows you to compare one vendor with another evenly. In this case, I found the connection was fast enough to deliver all the content I wanted to stream, I could game with no lag or stuttering, and sit back, relax, and surf the internet without any issues. 
Let's take a look at the parts of the unit, most of which will be common throughout the different models. On the front, you have a power outlet that passes power through from the wall outlet. You also have four lights. The top light is the power LED. Green means the adapter is powered. If it's off, there's no power going to the unit. The second light from the top is the connection LED. Green means the current connection rate is more than 40 megabits per second. Orange is a connection between 5 and 40 megabits, and red is when the current connection is less than 5 megabits per second. Note, red doesn't mean that it's not working, only that it's very slow. If the connection LED is off, an adapter connection does not exist. The third light from the top is the security LED. A solid green light means the adapter and connection is secure. If it's green and blinking, the adapter is in the process of becoming secure because it has either generated a security key and is broadcasting it to other adapters, or it could mean that the device is receiving a security key because another adapter has generated keys for others to pick up. The fourth light on the unit is the Ethernet LED. If the light is green and solid, an Ethernet connection has been established. If it's blinking, data is actively being transmitted over the connection. If it's not lit, there's no Ethernet connection. On one side, there's a button and a small hole with a button recessed in it, which can be used to reset your device. The button with the chain and lock symbol is for setting up the security feature, and if you press the button down for two to five seconds, it'll start the pairing process. If no other devices on the network are currently broadcasting a security key, one will be generated, and once the security LED starts to blink, you'll need to press and hold the security button on another power line adapter to allow it to receive what the first unit is sending out. You need to do all of that within two minutes which can mean if you already have started the process on another device, pressing and holding the button on a different unit will start the process of it looking for security keys being broadcast for it to accept. On the bottom of this version, there's a gigabit ethernet port, and on the back side is the power plug that you'll want to put directly into the wall. A quick note about power line adapters. You do not want to use any sort of object between the power line adapter and the power outlet. Not a three-way splitter, not a surge protector or extension cord, nothing. These can have very negative impacts on the connection, connection speed, and reliability. So it is not advised, and I do not suggest using one for power line adapters, unless in the setup and pairing process, which I'll go over in a moment. You can use them on the other electronics, but just not the power line adapter. I made a video with extensive connection and speed tests around my house, and that information is in this video right up here. I highly suggest watching that one after you're done watching this one. Other lights you may see on other power line adapter options are Wi-Fi connection lights, like a 2.4 and 5 GHz connection LED. On the units that have multiple Ethernet ports, the connectivity and activity lights are located on the bottom next to the plugs. This goes for both the power over Ethernet and the 4 port gigabit switch versions. So now you might be asking, okay, how do I install these? They're really simple to get up and running. You'll need a minimum of two G.HN Wave 2 power line adapters to create a connection. Plug one of the adapters into the wall and connect the ethernet port from the adapter to your router using an ethernet cable. And now this adapter has a signal for the internet that I want to distribute. Now I'm going to plug this other adapter into the wall and connect the ethernet port to the device I want to give network connectivity to. Going back over to the first adapter, I'm going to press and hold the security button for two to five seconds. And now we see the security LED has started to blink. I now have two minutes to get over to the second adapter and press and hold its security button so I can complete the pairing process. You can save time by doing this pairing while they're in close proximity, like the same room, and then relocate it after. I'll wait for the power line adapters to sync up and establish a connection. This can take a few minutes. But once the adapters are paired, the security LED on both adapters should turn on and stay solid. Just a quick heads up during the pairing process. The LED light on the second adapter will be a solid green when paired. However, the first adapter connected to the router may continue to blink for the remainder of the two minutes. This extra time is for when you want to pair more than two adapters and add more connectivity to your home. Now we test the connection to ensure the power line adapters are working properly. 
You can do this by opening a web browser on your device and visiting a website. If you're running into trouble getting your devices to pair, no worries. Here are some troubleshooting tips to get you started. If your Wave 1 adapters are not pairing properly, bring both adapters into the same room and plug them into separate outlets. Or for pairing purposes, this is the one case you can use a power strip. Pair them using the steps above, and once the process is complete and secure connection is established, you can move them to their final locations. If you're using Wave 2 adapters like mine, try pairing them in a different outlet. Since the Wave 2 adapters create a very powerful broadcast, it's okay if the outlet is even farther away than the original outlet. Once you've established a connection, you can move the second adapter back to its original location. If the connection is slow or unstable, try moving the power line adapters to different electrical outlets to see if that helps. You may also want to try using different Ethernet cables or resetting the power line adapters to their default settings. I have found if I end up moving a device to a different plug, resetting both the unit sending the signal and the one receiving it has helped establish better connections. And that's it! With these steps, you should be able to get set up and pair your G.HN powerline adapters quickly and easily. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you again to the sponsor of this video. Links to the devices I used are in the video description below. If you have questions, leave them down in the comments and I will help you out if I can. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more content coming soon. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful day.